If you want a luxury electric vehicle between the fifty and sixty thousand dollar range, and I mean pure electric, no gas, you have two choices right now. You have the BMW i3, which has been out since 2014, and you have the Tesla Model 3, which they just started deliveries last year, but basically you couldn't get it unless you're an employee. Well, now they're really starting to make more of these and they're easier to obtain. So BMW blog obtained a Model 3 series rear wheel drive long range uh, car, which oddly enough, the sticker price of these two cars is within $1,000 of each other. So it does bring up a good comparison test. Which would you buy for between fifty and sixty thousand dollars? BMW has gone about their philosophy for the electric car much different than what Tesla has. The notion that this is a city car, that this is what you want to drive when you're in town. So it has an effective range of about 120 miles. Uh, when it first launched, it had actually an 80 mile range uh, because they had done research and said, well, the average person in Europe and the United States, they drive about no more than 80 miles in a day. Subsequently, about a year ago, the battery capacities, they were able to increase them to 96 amp hour, and now they have 33 kilowatt hour battery pack, which means these can go about 120 miles on a charge now. There's rumor that it's gonna be a, a farther one, but probably not, not even gonna be close to this one. Tesla, on the other hand, has a much different philosophy when it comes to what, how they make an electric car. Uh, they believe you should be able to drive it as far as you want. Uh, they have electric, car chargers, now superchargers that are located within 99% of the population are, is about 100 miles from, from one now. What that means is you can drive this across the country. To start with, let's begin with the i3. It's a very futuristic feeling car. In fact, both of them really are. Although I would tell you that this one's a lot easier to get in than just drive. All the labels on the steering wheel, they're all self-explanatory. They've, they've all they all have markings, and I don't think I really realized that uh, that I was missing that um, until I drove the Model 3, where the buttons have no labels. So you, they have different functions on the Tesla, so it's hard to know um, until you memorize them exactly what they do. As far as driving dynamics go, uh, I love the instant torque and acceleration of the i3. It may have less horsepower, but it has less weight to push. It has a very short wheelbase, and it's extremely responsive uh, when you're turning. Uh, and uh, it really makes you feel like you're driving a little go-kart. It just it darts back and forth, uh, and it's a lot of fun to, to drive around town. In fact, I think around town driving is where uh, it's its forte is where it does the best and no one can beat the bmw i3 when it comes to a tight turning radius if you're like me and an adult child on ramps never get old when it comes to highway driving the i3 feels honestly a little bit out of its element it does fine, but the main difference that you notice, and today is really windy, so it's a good day for an example, is that the i3 doesn't have as good of a coefficient of drag. So this car has a coefficient of drag of 0.32. The Tesla has a 0.23 drag. So huge difference when you're going down the freeway. Uh, and in fact, you even notice it on the consumption on the i3. On the interstate, you'll notice that your estimated range will start to fall. So in town, my consumption is approximately 250 watts per mile or about four miles per kilowatt hour um, is pretty normal for the i3. Once you get out on the freeway, the wind resistance starts getting exponentially higher the, the far the, the, the higher you, you start going. So 60 miles an hour, not too bad. 65, a little worse, 70, 75 starts getting a little worse so it's not as efficient and if you have the first generation i3 i used to notice that the the handling could feel especially in a windy day like today you would feel it be a little bit tipsy or top heavy uh, which i've never never really felt in another bmw before or since um, we have the 2018 i3 s and it has a lowered suspension a little stiffer springs a um, little wider track, uh, and that makes a really big difference. And now, driving on the inter interstate, it doesn't get blown around as much. Another fairly significant difference between the i3 and the Model 3 is how they handle active cruise control. The i3 is 
got one camera. It's the camera up here by the, by the rear view mirror, and it is a lot more conservative. It does a very good job, but it will it will let a car get away from it as opposed to just pace it. I3 has four car lengths you can follow from one to four, uh, and every time you stop the car and get it back out and start the car again, it doesn't remember what you asked of it. So you have to tell it again that I want one car length. If I go to four, everybody in the lane is going to start jumping in front of me. One of the things I like of the i3 over the Tesla is when you turn active cruise control on, it comes on at the speed that you're going, not uh, jumping up to the speed limit that you're in. The electric line noise never gets old. I love the way that sounds. And the i3, you hear it best, oh, about 20 to 30. The i3S uh, helps the acceleration over 30 miles an hour. The car accelerates a lot faster than the base i3. Between zero and 30, you don't really notice a difference. You definitely can tell when you're getting on the on-ramp that it's quicker zero to 60 than, than the other i3. Though the i3 looks like a two-door car, it actually has four doors. Two small suicide doors are right behind the front doors and open up and allow easier access to the back seat. There is seating for a total of four. Though the i3 may seem small on the outside, the hatchback aspect and the fold-down rear seats uh, really make it a very practical car for the size that it is. It does have a front trunk or a frunk, which is not really useful for anything other than a gallon of milk. It is also not weather sealed. The interior of the i3 is futuristic. Uh, these electric vehicles, uh, since they aren't um, bound by the constraints of transmission tunnels for uh, the things that you have to have for a uh, car, eucalyptus wood is used on the front uh, here. The uh, leather is dyed with olive leaves that I don't really understand, but the net result is a nice looking brown leather. Heated seats in the front. Unfortunately, there are no heated seats in the back, and unfortunately, there's no heated steering wheel either. The all electric i3, uh, people call it the i3 BEV for a battery electric vehicle, has a heat pump that is used for heating and cooling. Uh, incredibly efficient. I've driven this car down into about five degrees Fahrenheit and this is the second BMW i3 I've owned and it's a it's a wonderful daily use vehicle. Come home, plug it in like your cell phone, wake up, you leave with full charge now with the increased battery pack of the 33 kilowatt hour. Uh, 120 miles is about what you can expect. I, I almost never go over that in a single day. So BMW is right in terms of that's what you need to do in your average day. One of the really cool things about the BMW i3 is the lighting at night is super cool on the inside. When you come up and you unlock it, there's a blue shoe. In 2018, BMW updated the head unit to have the, the latest iteration of iDrive and Apple CarPlay, uh, which was a $300 option. And I find that the BMW is much better at the integration with the phone in terms of being able to play playlists or find music uh, as opposed to the Tesla where you have to grab the phone and then physically start the playlist on the phone. Through this button on the center console, you can change the car from Sport to Comfort to Eco Pro to Eco Pro Plus. Uh, I generally tend to leave it in Comfort as changing these doesn't really change the amount of horsepower the car has or the amount of energy that's in the battery. The Sport option, however, is unique to the i3S. It does make it more eager to take off when you step on the throttle. However, it doesn't really add any horsepower to the car. The first time you get to drive a Model 3, I guarantee you, you're not going to forget it. You're handed what looks like a small credit card, and you can go tap it up just below the camera in the B-pillar. This will then unlock the car, and then you place the same card just behind the cup holders right in front of the armrest, and then step on the brake. That's all there is to it. The other alternative is to have an app and pair the app to the car, and then you don't need the card. As far as driving dynamics go, this actually reminds me a lot of a 3 Series sedan from probably at least one generation ago, the E90 chassis. You can feel that this is rear-engined and that it has uh, just power to the rear wheels, so it kind of sits down uh, as you accelerate. has really good uh, weight balance. On the freeway, I think the Model 3 hi uh, handles better. Um, on lower speed, I'm not sure. Uh, both the 
The i3s and the Model 3 handle extremely well at low speed. Like, I really want to take them out and autocross them, but I just have to get get both cars to an event and then give it a shot. So to engage autopilot, just double tap down, and then it will set the speed that you want. Uh, it initially, we'll go with the speed limit in the area that you're in. Most of the speed limits that it reads are actually quite accurate. Uh, when Autopilot in Model 3 first came out, I really didn't like it much because on the Model S, you just tap a stock on the side and you start pulling the speed limit down. Shortly after the Model 3 came out, Tesla pushed an over-the-air update to the car that allowed that same feature now accessed through the thumb wheel. Scroll it down one little click, one mile an hour, rapidly scroll it down, knocks five miles an hour off at a time similar to the Model S and X. Driving for a while with autopilot on and I really don't have to do anything. Uh, it will, every now and then this will turn blue and ask you to put your hands on the wheel. Um, I find if I just rest my hand here, then um, it senses that I'm slightly tugging on the wheel and it will not freak out. If you just disregard the system and you're not paying attention uh, it will progressively scream at you and then eventually shut off. You can tell it's on when you have the blue on both the speedometer. And here you go, you have, have apply light force, then you'll start getting a blue up here, and then in a second it will you'll hear an auditory alarm also. Right there. So there, tug on the wheel, and then it's the machine's happy. Electric cars by their very nature are extremely quiet and this one's no exception. Um, what I'm really impressed with about the Model 3 is that uh, that it is extremely windy out right now and um, there's very little wind noise. So it is extremely aerodynamic car. In fact, this one's been running at 214 watts per, mi per mile. Um, so in BMW speak, they're used to how many miles you can get per kilowatt. I wish there was an agreement between the two and there was only one uh, but anyway, if you do the math, this is almost between four and a half to five miles per kilowatt hour, which is about what the BMW will do in the city with uh, stop and go, maybe 30 mile an hour traffic. The Tesla clearly is very, very efficient at highway speeds, and um, I think that's how they're able to get the ridiculous range they get out of these. Um, this one's rated for, this is a rear wheel drive version, it's rated for 310 miles. Overall though, this comparing Autopilot, I guess they call this Autopilot 2.5 to Autopilot 1, uh, there's a lot less uh, meandering back and forth on the steering wheel. You'll, the, the steering wheel is just dead nuts on. So now I'm going to hit the automatic lane change and it's changing the lane on its own and then going to speed up. Another thing I like about the autopilot is it will let you set the distance between cars so if I want the distance between the car in front of me to be closer I click this if I want it to be farther I click it farther away you can go between one and well what does it go seven between one and seven car lengths uh, is the amount of space the only problem with putting seven car lengths in front of you is then people start serially jumping in front of you and so I usually leave it about uh, two between one and two. Really following traffic uh, at 58 miles an hour, uh, even though it's set at uh, 65, it will follow the car in front of you. Another complex curve, steering wheels turning, 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 slowed the car down to 41 to make the corner, which is pretty cool because there's no way you could take that corner at 65. The Tesla does have blind spot detection. Uh, you know, I wish it were in the mirrors on the side, but it, it's actually in here. So you can see it, you just have to get used to if there are cars behind you knowing it or looking at this pictograph. If you hit lane change while on autopilot, the car actually will look and it won't change lanes until the lane is actually clear. The Model 3 definitely feels a lot faster. Um, it has a lot more punch to it, especially um, zero to 60 and on the freeway you know pretty much in all power bands this car has more power as far as creature comforts go the has automatic air conditioning the fascinating 
you know, single air vent, heated seats, front and rear. The only surprising omission, the steering wheel is not heated. I'm just a little surprised because a lot of people try to save energy in the winter in electric cars. And part of how you do that is by not running the cabin heat. And if you have a heated seat and a heated steering wheel, you need less ambient uh, air temperature. For reference, the i3 does not have a heated steering wheel either. Both big omissions in my book with an electric car. Model S, Model X, they have, they have it. Summon is useful to help move the car forward or backward if you realize that you need to pull it back farther when you've gotten out or if you have a tight parking space. The Tesla superchargers for the Model 3 are actually capable of charging the Model 3 at rates of up to 120 kilowatts. This absolutely crushes the i3 DC charging rate which peaks out at about 50. The Tesla supercharging network is also within approximately 150 miles of 99% of the U.S. population. The Model 3 is a very practical car. It seats five. It has a front and rear trunk. The frunk is actually much more usable than the i3's uh, one gallon size. The rear trunk has got fold-down seats, um, but it does lack the hatchback aspect of the i3 and the Model S. The cabin is really cool. It's very futuristic with uh, just this big head unit here that um, that is kind of polarizing. Some people like it and some people don't. Um, it definitely takes a little bit to get used to. The dash is extremely sleek and modern. There's just one massive air vent where you can change the direction of flows through some buttons on the dash. You can drag the air flow around. You can split it. It's unlike anything I've ever seen in an automobile. And you can actually say that quite a bit about this car. The one large display here does take some getting used to. Most people are used to having a, an odometer here, but you know, if, if you've driven a BMW Mini Cooper, uh, the, the odometer is in the center. Um, same with the Z8 a long time ago and some other cars have had that. So it's not that far out of it to, to not have a, a gauge cluster right in front of the steering wheel. Um, what is different though is this steering wheel and these two buttons. These two buttons, uh, you end up doing a lot of different things with the buttons and it takes a little bit uh, of time to learn exactly what they do. Uh, and they, they change depending upon what menu you're in. Obviously most of this you can't really do while you're driving because it gets um, kind of complex, especially if you're not used to it. So to change the mirrors, uh, you have to hit the little car icon and then from the car icon you select the mirror icon and then you touch the button and it'll let you move uh, the mirrors left or right. When you want the right one, you still use the left thumb wheel. As far as fit and finish goes, the interior quality of this car has been great. I haven't heard any squeaks or rattles. All the doors shut with a nice solid thunk. When you're driving an electric car, if there's issues, you're going to hear them because it's so quiet. Uh, you would hear rattles in a car, for example. I haven't heard any in this car. One of the things I like about the Model 3 over the Model S and X is that you have door pockets. You have nice interior cabin lighting. Oddly enough, I think the stereo sounds a lot better in the Model 3 than the Model S. I'm not sure why that is, but it definitely sounds almost like you're in a concert hall. So I want to show you what the bottom of the Model 3 looks like. And uh, as you can imagine, it, it is fairly aerodynamic. And if that's what you would imagine, you would would not be disappointed. This thing is ridiculous how smooth the bottom is. I mean, it is, I mean, crazy. It's one of the, well, the smoothest underbodies of any car that I've seen. Absolutely slick all the way from one end to the other. It's where the battery lives is, is under that big, huge panel there. Uh, now the underside of the BMW i3 is very similar to the Tesla in terms of this large, spot right here is the battery pack. It's the only difference is in the BMW i3 they have a version where you can cram uh, a two-cylinder gasoline motor and that would go right up in there. In the case of the i3 you can actually see the motor uh, right up in there. In the Tesla there is you have no chance of seeing that so the airflow for the Tesla underneath the body of the car is going to be much much better than this. Although this is not bad, this is certainly way better than any kind of uh, internal combustion engine car. Uh, EVs, as time moves on, it's like if you look at generations of cell phones, electric vehicles continue to progress as time moves on. And in 2014, this really was cutting edge. And BMW has incrementally improved it. With They had a big 
uh, update uh, at the beginning of this year and last year they increased the battery capacity but they really haven't done much and in fact BMW is says they're kind of done with this car and that they're not going to make another one and that that bothers me because this is actually our second one and we put over 46,000 miles on i3s uh, on the pure electric i3s but this is the future of the EV uh, a car that you can drive across the country. You tell it where you want to start, where you want to go, it tells you how to get there, where you need to charge, how many minutes. So not only when you buy the Tesla Model 3 are you buying the car, you're also buying into the network and the whole net, the functionality that that provides. Uh, BMW says that you get uh, free charging with this one for two years. Well, you know, guess what? The closest free charger for me is uh, over 500 miles away. The DC charging is not free for the Model 3 either unless you get the Model 3 Performance. Uh, but it's still less expensive than gas. Obviously, we're a BMW block and we love BMWs, but in this case, the clear winner is the Tesla Model 3. Meet the best-selling luxury vehicle on the market. That's luxury vehicle, meaning not just cars, but SUVs and crossovers too. Other luxury brands like Mercedes and BMW may sell more vehicles overall, but for a single model, last year, this car outsold them all. Tesla's stated goal has been to make electric cars available for everyone, and this is their biggest step yet in that direction. This is the Tesla Model 3, the car that over 400,000 people have been waiting for. That's how many have put down a $1,000 deposit to buy one. Whether or not this car does what Tesla wants it to do, well, that depends on its design, its performance, its technology, and its price. Now here's a buzzkill for you. This car does not cost $35,000. The one I'm driving costs $56,000. So I'm doing the mental math of subtracting out 21 grand worth of stuff, including this nice wood trim, the sunroof over my head, and the big battery pack and the extra performance that brings to decide without all that, would this still be worth $35,000? And with all that, is it really worth $56,000? Well, let's take it for a drive and find out. There's no crazy fast, ludicrous mode on the Model 3, but it's still as quick as some of the best performance sedans around. The ride quality might not be quite what you expect for 56 grand, but what you do get is all the power you expect from a Tesla. Electric drive has its advantages. The Model 3's design is smooth, simple, elegant. Inside and out, there's nothing unnecessary. Like, for instance, gauges, or mirror switches, or vent controls. It seems to me Tesla's impulse to techify everything has turned simplicity into a problem. What there is, is this screen. It's everything. It's your speedometer, all your gauges, and pretty much it controls almost everything on the car. On the one hand, it's kind of cool, and I applaud Tesla for taking a design risk here. As gauges, it works fine. Having my speedometer over here doesn't bother me in the least. It works great. But having to control everything on the car pretty much through this screen is annoying as hell. The Model 3's built-in navigation is great. It's easy to use and easy to read. But is it enough to make me want to drive this every day? First time I drove a Tesla Model S, my mind was blown because that car was better than anything you could buy for that money, gasoline or electric. With the Tesla Model 3, I don't quite feel the same way. This is a good car, but it's one that's going to sell to people who really want to buy a Tesla. What I was hoping for was something that would finally make an electric car at this price a no-brainer.